Good evening, everyone. We are back with another case related to gynecology. This is the seventh case, and it is a case study on urinary incontinence. Our patient is a 61 year old female. She had complaints of involuntary loss of urine for 10 years, urinary urgency, and increased frequency. She passes urine every hour during the day and has to get up two or three times each night. Uh, she had these symptoms since almost 10 years, which started getting severe as time passed by. So she finally decided to see her general practitioner about it after hearing a program on the radio about treatment for incontinence. Her leaking is generally small amounts and she wears a pad all the time. It tends to occur when she cannot get to the toilet in time. She never leaks on coughing or sneezing and she suffers urgency, particularly when she comes home after being out and is about to come into the house. Social history, she is a non-smoker. Due to the incontinence, she tries not to drink much and usually has two cups of tea first thing in the morning, coffee mid-morning, and a further cup of tea mid-afternoon. Other than that, she drinks one glass of squash per day and has one glass of wine at night. So social history is important since uh, we can see that there is high caffeine intake in this patient. So caffeine is known to increase the uh, urinary output or, and uh, frequency. So it is advisable to reduce the cough, caffeine intake in this patient. Pregnancy status, she has had two uncomplicated vaginal deliveries. Menstruation history, her period stopped at the age of 54 years. There is no other gynecological or medical history of note. Objective data on examination, abdominal examination is normal. On vaginal examination, there is minimal uterovaginal descent and no anterior or posterior vaginal wall prolapse. So prolapse is the weakening of ligaments and it causes shifting of the organ or dropping from its original position. So that is not found in this patient. Investigations performed were midstream urine analysis. Uh, protein was negative, blood negative, leukocytes was also not found, and nitrites was also not found in the urine. Urodynamics, the first urge to void was reported at 150 ml bladder filling. Involuntary detrusor contractions were noted while the patient was attempting to inhibit micturation. There was no loss of urine with cuffing. So this is a test which is usually performed to see the bladder filling and voiding uh, time. Assessment, diagnosis on the basis of subjective data, objective data, and investigations. The diagnosis is of overactive bladder syndrome. This was formally referred to as detrusor instability. Urodynamic investigation with filling and voiding systometry is helpful in confirming the diagnosis by showing spontaneous detrusor contractions during bladder filling. Signs and symptoms, overactive bladder is characterized by a group of four symptoms urgency, urinary frequency, nocturia, and urge incontinence. Nocturia is the urge to void the bladder in the middle of night, which does not help to sleep. So this patient was also suffering from nocturia. The need of therapy to manage patient's symptoms and to improve patient's quality of life. About the disease, overactive bladder is a common condition where there is a frequent feeling of needing to urinate to a degree that it negatively affects a person's life. The cause of overactive bladder is unknown. Risk factors include obesity, caffeine, and constipation. Overactive bladder affects approximately 11% of the population and more than 40% of people with overactive bladder have incontinence. Specific treatment is not always required. If treatment is desired, pelvic floor exercises, bladder draining, and other behavioral methods are initially recommended. Weight loss in those who are overweight, decreasing caffeine consumption, and drinking moderate fluids can also have benefits. Medications typically of the anti-muscarinic type are only recommended if other measures are not effective. Management and intervention. It is important to exclude other causes of such symptoms, such as urinary tract infection or a bladder tumor with urine microscopy. 
So in case of urinary tract infections, burning, micturation, and uh, frequent urination is seen. And in case of bladder tumors, blood in urine may be seen. But in this patient, blood was not found and burning micturation was also not seen. So we can rule out these causes. Uh, for the management part, conservative management, the women should be advised that both caffeine and alcohol are bladder stimulants and are likely to worsen symptoms, so should be minimized. She should take a normal fluid intake per day, but avoid drinks after about 7 p.m. to limit nocturia. So this patient was taking uh, two cups of tea in the morning and two cups of coffee approx, along with a glass of wine at night. So both caffeine and alcohol may be affecting her bladder. So it is advised to reduce the intake of both caffeine and alcohol. Then bladder retraining for six weeks involving a drill restricting voiding to increasing intervals should be taught. This is like bladder exercising where uh, the patient is advised to try to control the urge so that they don't urinate every time they have the urge, but then only you void their bladders at particular intervals of time. It might help to train their bladder. Medical treatment. If lifestyle advice and bladder retraining fail, then anticholinergic medications such as oxybutynin or tolterodin should be commenced. The associated side effects include dry mouth, dry eyes, and constipation. Both these drugs are anti-muscarinic agents and it helps in reducing the symptoms in this patient, but it is only advised in case the non-pharmacological or conservative management does not have much effect. With this, we'll conclude today's session. Thank you for watching and please share the video if you liked it. Thank you.